Hi everybody, it's 314 Reactor here. Today we're going to be looking at Unreal Tournament again with Reshade and Ray Traced Global Illumination. There's been a new release for the Global Illumination Shader, 0.10 release, and a little patch on top of that that if you are a Patreon of Martin McFly, you can go on the Discord into the beta channel and find those updates. One of the main updates fixes the light flickering that we saw previously where if you turned up the values too high and there's too much lighting there'd be flickering and it'd look all funky and weird so now they've come up with a workaround for that so let's dive right into hyperblast and what i've got here is a setting that activates a flicker reduction workaround I'm not sure what this does or how it works but it makes this really funky effect like you're seeing like super blur not sure that's intentional I doubt it is but I think it's supposed to work around flickering that happens in games that have temporal anti-aliasing like was seen in my doom video last week because on doom eternal the temporal anti-aliasing was causing an issue with the ray trace lighting even though the main lighting flickering issue was solved so I think this has been designed as a workaround for that so it's not necessary in Unreal Tournament because of course there is no uh, temporal AA, but I thought I'd give it a go and it looks really really funky as you can see here It's like LSD mode or something like that. I won't be playing with that on so I'll flick that off What we will be looking at though is the lighting channel and just looking at the Reduction of flickering that has been patched into this brand new version because before Let's find a good space to look at because before places like this with the lighting really up high would cause major flickering especially in these corners and bits here, but now It's pretty much a solid color which is Much improved that means you can just crank everything up got settings here fade out is right up top bounce lighting intensity I've turned right up to 10 Ray step mount's quite high, ray length is quite high. So if we fire up in game, you can see all the different colors. Ray step amount, 16. Ray length, there we go. So when you turn the ray length right up like that, you can definitely see there's still a bit of flickering but nowhere near as much as we would have seen in my previous video, which I'll link down below. Oh my god, that is crazy. Might turn off the god rays. There we go. So yeah, there's still some flickering, but vastly, vastly reduced. That's with the ray length up to max 20, so that's where you're getting maximum bounce lighting and shadows. Ray amount, 6. That's what really kills the frame rate, the ray amount. So let's flick back to normal. That is looking quite overblown. Let's get the frame rate up. Uh, frame rate is around 44. I've also got sharpening and depth of field on as well in reshade. Let's turn the bounce lighting intensity down a bit to six. So that doesn't really affect the frame rate too much. Ray step amount doesn't really affect the frame rate. Ray length doesn't really affect the frame rate but gives you way more lighting going on. So you want length up so the rays are flying out as far as possible. Ray step them out so that they're analysed more often on their path. I'm not sure. It doesn't have an explanation when you hover over it. There's no tooltip. Uh, ray amount. It's pretty self-explanatory. Enable precise light spreading. Oh wow, yeah. Much better shadowing that on so we'll leave that on. The flicker reduction workaround of course just softens everything and makes it all blurry. So you can kind of see actually how that works. So you've still got a bit of flickering there, greatly reduced from what it was. But when you enable the flicker reduction workaround, it pretty much removes all the flickering. But it does result in this weird sort of blur. That's a shame, because that does make things look really, really nice. Never mind. We can live with that bit of flickering. It's nowhere near as bad as it was. Um, so just look at all that extra shading that's going on these corners. All the ambient occlusions handled by this. That lighting coming out the door there with that precise lighting. So very, very nice. So this with the effect on. And that's the effect off. Just look at that extra shading going on there. 
All on the gun. The shadowing behind those barrels there. And of course I'm using the latest DirectX 11 patch with this, uh, which is DirectX 11 1.4, which I'll link down below in the description, which is why we have the screen space reflections on the guns and the floor and stuff. That's being done by the renderer, nothing to do with reshade. So you can see the shadowing behind this bit here, really nice around there. Those bits there, and then with it off, gone. Now as we saw on uh, Doom Eternal video last week, the shadows appear to be relative to where you're looking at them. Um, so the shadows there as I'm looking at it, and then as I go around, that shadow disappears. So I, th I think it's something to do with the fact that it's screen space. So yeah, that shadow there disappears as you go around and back and around. But it's not a deal breaker. The fact that we're running uh, a form of ray tracing on a 21 year old game nearly is uh, pretty incredible. That's with the effect on. And that's with the effect off. So let's load up another map. Let's do a bit of Galleon. Quite a nice bit of extra shadowing going on around here. Turn the effect off. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's a hell of a difference. The sharpening I've added as well makes the textures look really, really nice. So if you look at the wood on the left there when we turn it off, that, that extra lighting being lost on it, and then boom, the sharpening as well really gives it that extra wood grain sort of effect makes it look much much more realistic and with the more realistic lighting being applied especially that distant wood there just above the uh, crosshair much sharper much better you probably need to make sure you're watching this video in 4k or at the very least 1080 in order to see these sort of minor differences but they're definitely visible in person of course got the uh, depth of field effects there can't wait to have a graphics card that's powerful enough to do all these reshade effects and do them at like 90, 100 frames a second, something like that. That would look really, really nice. I'm also hoping that somehow we can get some sort of ray tracing algorithm into the DirectX 11 renderer. So the developer of that, if you're listening, I don't know if it's possible, but that would be awesome if you could do that. To essentially do what reshade's doing with the uh, RTGI, but do it actually in engine, because I think that'd be a lot more performant, rather than having to do it uh, post-process. I could be wrong on that, I could be completely wrong on that. Let's have a look at the lighting channel again, see how much ambient occlusion intensity we've got. So I think possibly, so that's, it defaults at 4, make that a bit stronger, maybe make that at 6 as well. Hmm, that doesn't look too bad, cranked up at 10, doesn't affect that frame rate too much either. So default of 4, ooh that looks really nice. All right, let's let's leave that ambient occlusion intensity cranked up to 10 because that looks really good. Off and on. Oh wow, well, yeah, look at the difference. I thought the effect might be a bit too strong because in certain games when you crank the uh, reshade ambient occlusion up to uh, too high in the RTGI shader, it just looks way too dark and too strong. I think because this game is much more geometrically simple, the effect is uh, more toned down. Oh yes, the shadowing behind that box there on the left. So let's have a look at another map. Let's have a look at ocean floor. So the frame rate's down to about 30, 38 there, 40. So this is with all the effects on in reshade. And then all the effects off. <laughs> wow. And back on. Yep. Again, let's check out that lighting channel just to see completely what's going on. There's so much lighting detail going on that you can pretty much play the game in the lighting channel. Whoa! Okay, let's turn the effect off. And that extra lighting there, especially in the, the corners. See, this area here looks really good. So that's with it off, and then on, boom. Way more detail. The lighting just looks so much more natural. 
That DLC sharpening uh, shader doesn't over sharpen, which is really good. I find I often don't use sharpening shaders too much because they tend to uh, make things look too sharp, but this seems to be quite intelligent in how it does that. So again, let's have a look at the old lighting channel. That's cool. That's very cool. Alright, so I think I'm going to look at one last map. It's going to be Face on Lava. That's what it's going to be. Let's just check out the old lighting channel again. Oh, so there's not a lot coming from the lava. That's a bit of a shame. I guess it's too far away. What if we drop down here? No. Oh, we got a bit coming from the lava there. There we go. So there's a bit glowing from the lava there. Not as much as I'd want, but that's fine. Oh, look at that shadowing there behind that wall. Really, really nice. So let's uh, flick back to normal. Oh yes, look at that. So you got these, uh, the shadow going down there from this wall, as you'd expect. You turn the ray tracing off and completely gone. And there is a nice glow coming from the lava. Very, very nice. So it's not like a completely accurate shadow, because of course it disappears when you come around the corner. So you can see the, the light from the flag proper hitting that wall and bouncing around. Yeah, you can see everything that's going on there. Let's see if we can turn the bounce light intensity up a little bit. No, no, no. Up to seven, that's still not blown out too much. It's not too bad. So you got that effect nicely on the weapon there. Yeah, combined with the screen space reflections, depth of field, sharpening, super high res textures. Again, all linked down below. Just looks absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at the lava being reflected in the gun there. Oh, yeah. Again, I have the, uh, like I've said in previous videos, I have the screen space reflections set up to 100% max. So you can turn these down if you want. You can turn down the environment reflections. You can turn down the reflections on the weapon. So it doesn't have to look too shiny if you don't like that. But for me, I like the shininess, so I have it right up to max. Yeah, that extra shadowing and shading is so nice. So what we're seeing here is a slight blur as I'm walking along. And that is because part of the sniper rifle is getting into the autofocus range of the depth of field. Let's reduce that a bit. Sample radius. We need to turn that down a little bit to 150. And that seems to have done the trick. Let's head to the Redeemer. Ooh. Ooh. That orange lighting on the bottom of the gun there. Let's check that out in the lighting channel. And yep, there it is. Ooh. That nice glow from the lava. Plus with the uh, reshade on. And then reshade off. Oh, yep. A nice glow from the lava makes it look super hot. So let's have a look in the Redeemer chamber. Whoa! Okay, so the Redeemer... <laughs> so the Redeemer just blurs everything because it's so big. I'm sure I fixed this before. Auto focus center. No, no, it won't be the X. It'll be the Y coordinate. If I move the Y coordinate down so it goes up screen. God damn, that Redeemer is massive. 267. So the center of focus should be away from where the Redeemer is. So we don't get a ridiculous blur with the Redeemer, but should still, things should still blur nicely. Yeah, that's not too bad. Maybe turn that hyperfocal down a bit. That's a bit extreme even for me. Uh, 250. Yeah, there we go. Whoop. Just go around the corner, bit of blur. Why did I even go into there again? That's right, I just want to see the lighting in here. Ray tracing on, and then ray tracing off. God, yeah, it just looks so dull without it. But the frame rate is so nice. It's a hell of a trade off. Ooh, yeah. Whoop. So you even got shadowing coming from this entire block that I'm standing on here. I'll show you what I mean in the old uh, lighting channel again. See all around there. That. Oh, man, that's nice. Alrighty, so let's try one last map and let's do it on LSD mode. That's with the uh, flicker reducer on that makes everything go super, super blurry, just for a bit of a laugh.
All right, so I've loaded up some Morpheus. Let's go to here and enable the flicker reducing workaround. Oh. That's not as blurry as it was. Oh, no, there it is. Is this something to do with the lighting channel? Super blurry, super blurry, like Vice City or something like that, and then off. Oh no, it still is blurry. It's just less noticeable on this map for some reason. But close up to these weapons, you can see it. Not as strong as it was on uh, Hyper Blast. Oh wow, in the lighting channel though, definitely visible. Maybe it's map dependent? It's not so bad now. Definitely noticeable. But it's not as much LSD mode as it was before, or what I thought. So it's not too bad. It gives it a bit of a, uh, like I said, a bit of a GTA 3 Vice City sort of motion blur look to it. it leaves sort of trails behind everything. But I'm sure it's not as bad as it was before. I'm not sure what I've changed. Interesting. So that is Unreal Tournament 99 running in DirectX 11 with Reshade and the very latest dot 10 release of the ray traced global illumination shader alongside a sharpening shader and a depth of field shader. Looks very, very nice. The flickering has been greatly reduced since the last release, which is really, really nice. There is another fix also in there in the very latest pack that also adds in a further flicker reducer but does add some weird sort of blurring and trails in as we've seen. So thank you all for watching. I hope you're keeping safe. Remember, stay calm and play Unreal Tournament. There'll be links to everything down below, uh, including how to get the ray tracing shader, which you will need to become a Patreon. Mighty McFly's in order to be able to download it. Please do like and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see any other games running in DirectX 11. I think Klingon Honor Guard is supported, so I'll be trying that at some point. And let me know if you want any other games with ray tracing implemented in them, because it does make a hell of a difference as we've seen. Like I say, please do keep safe, and I'll see you in the next video.